Hello, everybody, and welcome to this introduction to QuizKit in preparation for the Algo Queens 2023 challenge. My name is Desiree Voxley, and I work in the community team within QuizKit in the APAC region. So, what is QuizKit? So, QuizKit is an open source development kit for working with real quantum computers and simulators at the level of circuits, pulses, and algorithms. So, IBM has its own in-house quantum computers and quantum simulators that are actually available for use online to anybody. All you need to do is sign up to create an account if you want to use a real quantum computer or download QuizKit for Python if you'd just like to use the quantum simulator. There are also online tools such as the IBM Quantum Composer, which you can see in this GIF here, which help you to create quantum circuits if you're a little more unfamiliar with how gates work. So for the Algo Queens challenge, you won't actually have to have QuizKit installed for it. The platform that you'll be using will support that and you can just run it in-house. If you are interested in running QuizKit locally, however, on your own device to experiment, please follow installation instructions on quizkit.org. Here you will find an overview of QuizKit as well as how to install QuizKit, some tutorials and more information. So let's just jump right into a demo of QuizKit. So here you will, I will teach you how to use QuizKit, a little introduction about quantum computing. You will also be provided with a Hello World introductory notebook to introduce you to QuizKit and quantum computing, as well as some questions at the end to test your knowledge. So this will be an introduction to get you familiar and whet your appetite before the start of the Algo Queens quantum challenge. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do when we are running any sort of QuizKit program is import QuizKit. So th for this particular exercise, we will be using the quantum register, classical register and quantum circuit modules within QuizKit. So import quantum register, quantum circuit and classical register. We will also be using NumPy. This is just the normal NumPy module that you'll be familiar with. And then in order to execute our quantum circuit, we will be needing to import the air simulator from QuizKit. So from QuizKit air import air simulator. So for this example, we will be creating the bell state. So the bell state demonstrates that measurements of an entangled state cannot be explained by any local hidden variable theory and that there must be correlations that are beyond classical. So this is one of the most e simple examples of proving entanglement that you will encounter within quantum physics. So an entangled state is a sum of product states that cannot be factorized. And for this particular entangled state, the Bell state, there is a 50% probability of being measured in the zero zero state, and then another 50% chance of being measured in the one one state. This is really interesting as there's actually no chance at all that this final measured state can be zero one or one zero. So the bell state is represented by this here. And in QuizKit, each qubit actually starts in the zero state. So we don't need to worry about transforming that. If you'd like to learn more about multiple qubits or entangled states, you can visit this link to the QuizKit textbook here. It covers a whole chapter of introductory material and some exercises. If you'd like to learn more about the Bell state, the Wikipedia has a great introduction to that as well. Okay, in order to create the Bell state, we will first need to define our quantum registers and our classical registers. So basically our qubits and our corresponding classical registers. So we can define the quantum register by quantum register two, and we will label it Q. We do the same for the classical register. And then now that we have both of these, we can actually define our quantum circuit by inputting both the QR and CR that we just defined. Perfect. Now we can 
start adding our gates to the quantum circuit. So if you're not familiar with the bell state, then this is what the circuit looks like. And this is what we will be implementing within Quizkit. So first we'd like to add, append the quantum gates to the circuit. So this is done by just simply calling QC and then the gate. So we'd like to add the Hadamard gate to the first qubit. So this is done by adding it to the zeroth as the indexing starts at zero. Now we need to include this controls not gate. So this is where the entanglement comes in. So it is starting on the zeroth qubit and then acting on the first qubit. So we do that with CX controls not, and we apply, we start that at QR zero, the first qubit, and then apply it to the second qubit, QR one. Now that we've finally finished creating our circuit, we can measure it. So this is simply done by running QC.measure and then applying it to our quantum registers and our classical registers. We can now run this. Perfect. So now we've created our quantum circuit. We actually want to visualize it, see what it looks like and make sure that we've done it correctly. So we can do this by running QC.draw. So this will visualize it as a matplotlib circuit to see if we've done it correctly. So you can see here, we have applied our Hadamard gate to the zeroth qubit, and then our C0 gate to both qubits for the entanglement, and then executed our measure on both the zeroth and first qubits here. So now what we want to do is we want to actually run our circuit. So first we need to define our backend. So this will be the air simulator. So we won't be using a real device right now for this. We then need to define our job. So this is actually where we run our quantum circuit. So backend dot run. And then now we insert our quantum circuit and let's just have the shots as 1024. So this is the default value. So now that the job has executed, let's visualize what the results are. So in order to do that, we need to have another import statement. So from quizkit.tools.visualization import plot histogram. Now we need to get the result from the job. So result equals job.result. And then from this, we can get the counts. So the counts will actually tell us how many, how many shots were measured in which state. So remember that we expect that 50% will be in the zero, zero state and 50% will be in the one, one state. So this will be result dot get counts. And then finally, we can plot the histogram plot histogram counts. So you can see here, this is what we expect. So 50% is in the zero, zero state, 50% is in the one, one state. And then also, as we predicted, there is 0% chance of being measured in the zero, one or one, zero state, which is what we see here. It doesn't appear on the graph at all. So that is exactly what we have expected. This is a really useful tool for you to be able to um, view the results of your experiment. So make sure you um, keep in mind this plot histogram. So now what happens if we want to run on a real quantum device? So in order to do, to do that, you'll first need to create an account on the IBM Q platform. So this will give you an API token, which you will need to include in your code. So from Quizkit import IBM Q. So this is a platform that we'll be using. And then provider equals IBM Q dot load account. So this is what you can do if you already have your account, your account API saved within your computer. If you don't have that already saved, you will need to do that first. Um, for instructions, you can find that on the IBM Q website or the QuizKit tutorials. Then we will need to select a provider. IBM Q dot provider. 
hub equals IBM. So this line essentially just gets a provider and defines all the very fundamental things that we need. The next line that we will import is actually choosing the backend which we want to use. Um, IBM Q has multiple real devices that you can use and in order to see which ones are currently available to use, what the job status is, what place you are in line, you can simply go to the IBM Quantum website. So that is at quantumcomputing.ibm. So you can see um, recent jobs completed and the different systems that are currently available. So you will have all of this when you create your own account. And this is where the API token is when you need to import that into your notebook as well. So the backend that we're choosing today is the Quito backend, get backend, IBM Q. Okay, so now that we've defined that, we can we can convert our experiment into a usable um, format to provide into the real device. So first we need to transpile it, our circuit. Um, and this is specifically to this backend that we're using. Then we can create a Q object and assemble what we just created sorry our mapped circuit um defining our back end again and then our shots is 1024 again so finally you can just do the exact same thing as we did for the simulator um backend dot run so I won't actually be running this um, cell here as it is a real device that so you will be waiting in line. The current estimate for this job to be completed for me is three days. So um, just, be in, just keep in mind that if you are running your experiment on a real quantum computer, then, then there is a queue and you will have to wait in line for that. So this has been a very short introduction to QuizKit and as I said, you will be provided with another, another example of a tutorial notebook that you can follow along before the Algo Queens Quantum Challenge. So for the Algo Queens Quantum Problems, we will be providing two problems at two different levels of difficulty. So the first one is for beginners to QuizKit and quantum computing. If you have only a little bit of knowledge of QuizKit and quantum computing, this is the problem that you would probably like to tackle. So this is a tutorial style set of exercises, which will guide you through understanding quantum computing fundamentals, as well as how to use QuizKit. So we will cover things such as the block sphere, executing circuits, and then dig a little bit into a very basic example of a quantum algorithm. We have a second problem that is aimed at intermediate to advanced users of QuizKit and quantum computing. So these problems will be a similar style of exercise that you will be familiar with from the rest of the classical algo queens problems. So they will be mostly algorithm based. So just some resources if you'd like to continue learning about QuizKit before the challenge. So the QuizKit website will take you to everything that you need. So it will link you to all these other resources below as well. But if you'd like to find information how to install QuizKit yourself, that's where you'll find it. The QuizKit textbook is an amazing resource. It starts from beginner and goes all the way to advanced. And you will learn here about the maths behind quantum algorithms and how to write code in QuizKit to implement these algorithms on the IBM quantum devices. So what we just did, but also it covers a range of different algorithms and different mathematical concepts. It is um, a resource I would highly recommend checking out. QuizKit tutorials are more focused on how to use the tools and libraries within QuizKit. So that is all from me today. Good luck with the problems in the Algo Queens and I wish you well. Thank you.